Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the next in the series design talks that are running here at the Myers Touch. We're sorry we can't be with you or you with us in person, but uh, we're still under some kind of restrictions, but it's lovely that so many of you have joined us tonight. Uh, you have myself and Keith here. Hi, good today. evening. And we're both going to talk about something which is quite uh, close and recently close as well to our hearts, which is um, about award-winning kitchens. And I'm sure and I hope that those of you have joined. And some of you I recognise, so hi to all those who are already friends and special hello to those of you who we've never met before. Uh, hoping that you'll want to peek into our world um, so that we can then look into your world and find out what it is you're after in terms of um, getting that special kitchen in your home that's kind of worth the title awarded to your, your uh, kitchen, your dream kitchen. And uh, so tonight we want to welcome you to ask questions while we're uh, giving the presentation. We've got one of our designers, Jay, who can't see you, you can't see her, but she's there on the chat box um, waiting to answer any questions that you have. They may be questions that are related to things that we're talking about this evening, or they may be something that, you know, a burning question that uh, you've got that she can kind of pick up a thread uh, along. You can do that chat personally to her, or you can do it to everybody so that everyone can be involved in that conversation as well. We always think it's nice the more that more people that are talking together, the, the bigger the picture, the more energy uh, we can put into these talks. We won't be able to see these questions as they arise ourselves, Keith and I. Um, so Jay will be answering them in the background. And of course, if there's anything kind of longer term, then we'll be delighted uh, for our team to help pick those things up later. Because obviously tonight, we're going to give you a snippet. Um, uh, this is the picture of, I think we've got technical problems today because we've got... Um, pictures changing, but it doesn't matter. Um, this is the, this front is our studio. Some of you, we've welcomed you here already, so that's fantastic. Uh, you know our little home here in Winchester. And for those of you who haven't seen us before, uh, we hope that you like the look of our house as much as we do. So um, imagine you're just walking up those steps, coming through our garden and now entering into the studio because we want to give you a huge welcome tonight. And hopefully the things that we have to say um, about kitchens that we have uh, designed for other people uh, will inspire you. Um, some of them will be ones that will grab your attention immediately and others you might not, not like so much, but this is the amazing thing about kitchens. They're designed for the people who live in them not the people who aren't living in them. And that's what's so precious to us is about being very personal. So here's our home and we welcome you to our design talk tonight. Uh, so tonight's design talk is on what makes an award winning kitchen design. We've done well, a number, haven't we? We have, we have. Um, and obviously we're um, particularly put this presentation together tonight because um, in case you don't know, we've just been um, named Kitchen Retailer of the Year a few weeks ago, maybe three or four weeks ago. We went up to Liverpool Cathedral and selected the award. If we just got here, if you can see it, not very well, there it is, just about glistening in the background there. Um, that's a delightful award because that's one of the, well, it is pr pretty much the top uh, award to get in the UK for, uh, for a studio like ourselves. So it's a great honour to be recognised by that. But I think one of the things we really wanted to touch on tonight, well, what makes an award-winning kitchen? And we have some really interesting kind of thoughts about that um, because ultimately um, when we're designing a kitchen, we're not actually designing it to win an award. Um, we're designing it to win a client, um, being yourselves and obviously clients that you'll see as, as we go through. Can we talk a little bit more about that? Uh, yes, so do you want to move on a couple of slides and we'll yeah. just walk through a few things. So just a tiny bit of background before we get onto some of the um, uh, pictures of the kitchen, which I'm sure is what you're really waiting to see. A um, couple of photographs of us, would you believe a few years in between, but 
still looking the same today. Still looking young, <laughs> young, young um, and handsome. Uh, obviously, um, some of the awards that we have won, uh, obviously the Kitchen Retailer one was absolutely fabulous. Uh, the studio also has won an award in itself. So if you haven't actually been able to get here to the studio, we've got some shots coming up of the studio just to give you a kind of a glimpse in uh, to what we've designed here. But what we feel in terms of the studio is it's really important that uh, it, it, the kitchens themselves are complete. They're not part kitchens. They've all been thought of in terms of the, the kitchen as a whole, whether you might like to uh, dine at that kitchen or use it as a hospitality kitchen, whether it's a smaller kitchen, a larger kitchen. So uh, we only have three in our studio, but they're very complete sets. And usually when someone walks through the door, one of them, people move towards one as though, oh, this is the one I want. So it's quite nice then because we automatically get a sense of, of where you're coming from and well, you know, what's burning in your heart towards your, your kitchen dream. So, uh, so winning uh, studio design is also great. And the, the third thing is getting design uh, awards for actually designing great kitchens um, for clients. Um, so we, we've been shortlisted for many of those. Uh, but as Keith said, we don't ever design just to win an award. It happens that um, sometimes we see a kitchen and we think, oh gosh, that is amazing and someone else would appreciate that. So we enter it. What we really are designing for is to win hearts and for your heart to be won and for the hearts of your friends to be won when they visit you. So that's what we call an award winning kitchen when you actually fall in love. So the, these three shots here are just a glimpse of um, the drama. <laughs> shot is the kitchen that's right behind us Keith. so yeah, yeah. so um this is the but smallest of our angle. kitchens it's yeah. a nice dark dramatic one um and this is what we can see and you can't uh, yeah. just we're just standing it. under that air conditioning unit which you can't see fortunately because it's not very attractive is it but, uh, <laughs> it is what it is so um a little bit about product do you want to just explain yeah that? so basically we're a somatic retailer um somatic is a um luxury german uh, kitchen manufacturer um, and they actually do a beautiful range and beautiful quality of product and now we've worked with somatic for a number of years this is their slx range which is their top range their first class range if you want to put it in terms of um, an economy business um, and first class range this is the first class range so beautifully designed and we've done a few um, slx kitchens uh, now, which we very much enjoy. We don't have it fully displayed in here. We have a small um, taste of it because it's only been out um, probably for about the last six to nine months. And, and our displays have quite a longevity uh, to them. But um, we like them because they, um, one, they're contemporary, um, which we are generally more contemporary, although they do have a bespoke arm to our business. Um, and we like them because they are really well built, their range is really good. And actually, although it's a um, how can I say more of a off the shelf type of product? It's very customizable and we can do a lot with it. Um, and we just love it. And we've been with Somatic now for probably uh, 12 or so years. This is just um, really talking about Somatic from some of the awards they've won for innovation and for design. Um, it really helps us, obviously, to be, um, as it were, our foundational products that we use have design awards behind them because that really helps us to produce. Um, kitchens are not only look beautiful, but function incredibly well. Um, this is what they call the Multimatic system, which is a tracking system on the back of the doors and on the inside of the covers. And you can just see, for example, where the glasses are hang, they're on a Multimatic system um, inside the cupboards and obviously the, the various elements from uh, spice holders and uh, kitchen towel holders there. Um, but also the kitchens themselves have um, won awards. This is a red dot award for design. This is the SLX again. Uh, which is our most recent uh, award with a, a real stone. You can see grey match stone uh, running all the way through the kitchen um, area there. This is a little bit of our SLX glass units in the studio here, um, which is our kind of reception desk, if that's the, the, the entry point to our, our studio. And it's just showing here we have five years of consistent house, house awards. Now, those of you who don't know house, it's like a portal um, that designers upload photos to. And on those um, photos, what you, um, uh, what you can do as a consumer is you can search through gray kitchens and it will just show you gray kitchens or gray contemporary kitchens with handlers and it will show you all those pictures. 
What they mean from our point of view is the service awards uh, we're awarded when we have a certain number of clients rate us um, at a very high level. Now we're five star rated on house, which is fantastic. I looked at it this morning because we had one come through and we have 37 uh, ratings on that gives us a five star overall rating. Um, so as a consumer, so as a company, as long as we make sure we're putting clients through to get that, we can get that award. Not easily, obviously we have to perform, but we can get it quite um, uh, without too much difficulty. The design one, however, it's a lot more difficult to get because that's based on clients saving your photos of your projects to their ideas books. Um, and the top 5% of companies globally that have their photos saved to the ideas book is how you get a design award. Um, with regard to having both awards each year, it's the top 2% of designers on a global basis. So we're very proud of that consistent record that we have from a design perspective. So cracking on really with um, projects and Helen myself, we're going to alternate a little bit. Most of these projects um, we've done joint jointly. Uh, so therefore we have both have a little bit of a, an influence on it. But this particular um, kitchen up here, this is an estately home in Hampshire. And when we were actually invited to look at the project, it had a 1970s kitchen kind of slightly falling apart, um, had a suspended um, office type ceiling uh, running at the level just above the windows. Um, and it definitely looked worse for wear and, and absolutely not reflecting the style of um, the house and, and also what the client was really wanting, but what a beautiful backdrop to actually start um, working on. So basically as we stripped the whole kitchen out, including the ceiling and revealed the carcass that we were dealing with, um, there was a number of things. One is all the cornice was um, broken um, in parts and uh, needed a lot of restoration work. Plus there was a four inch soil pipe had been punched through the wall and it was just basically running across the ceiling uh, to feed a bathroom which had to be removed and, and redone. But when we actually started with this um, kitchen uh, as a backdrop, um, it was um, an incredible challenge to deal with the height and play with this, this lovely tension between the new and the old. And so often people um, say, I, I want a kitchen that uh, reflects my house. Um, and as you'd think in a stately home, you'll be going to put in a very shaker style, um, uh, you know, in frame type of kitchen. But actually, here the client went for a contemporary style kitchen, but really working with the color scheme and the materials of the room. Can, can we go back? Can I just say something? Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. Just quickly, back. Last slide. Um, I just want to show you, you know, that, see that in the background on the right hand side, the beautiful um, bureau, you know, antique bureau there which um, is a client's own piece and you can't see it completely, but there's another beautiful piece of furniture on the left-hand side of the window as well. And obviously you've got things like an original mirror, which you can just see in the foreground on the right-hand side. Um, I love it when um, a client says, these are items that I want to keep, I want to retain, something of the old, a bit like getting married really, something old, something new. And um, knowing when you start what it is that you want to take of the old with you and bring into the new is so important in getting that right uh, vibe and feeling. Here at the Myers Touch, one of our strongest ethos points is not what your kitchen looks like, but it's what it feels like when you're living in the kitchen. That is the most important thing to us, to make your kitchen sing. And so uh, I just, we wanted to show you this picture and we're gonna show you the reverse side from the other side, just to show you that, um, you know, you can take on this side, it looks so contemporary, um, perhaps slightly made more um, softer by the glass units at the top, the nickel, nickel gloss and glass units that run, and obviously that beautiful um, flowing chandelier, but otherwise fairly contemporary, but just a transitional kitchen here, um, which is very personalized. So we, we know not everybody likes a transitional kitchen, but we know this client did, and that's, that's what won their hearts. And actually, the hearts of a few people, because that's in for a few actual designs as well. So it was, it's you know, so beautiful. Yeah, this will be in, um, I think it's uh, KBB Review Magazine next year. Um, so there's a slight embargo on it at the moment with regard to publishing it. But um, we're up for Society of British and International Design Award, um, which actually is happening on Friday. 
um, in London. So we're up there for that. And the KBSA, which is the Kitchen Bathroom Specialist Association, uh, we're up for finalists um, in their luxury kitchen sector. So that's great. Um, should I talk about this one? Yeah. Yes, let me do this one. This is um, this is a lovely project we did some years ago now, um, and it was uh, published in a magazine, which is where this um, picture came from, the photo shoot. And uh, we were up for Kitchen Design of the Year in uh, 2011 now, which is a long time ago. But um, and this was our really our first project that we ever got into a design award, and it was a bit of a surprise really because. Like I said, we don't design for design awards, we design for the needs of the client. And, and this was a particularly kind of fun one because as we went to see the project, um, the client um, kind of came into the center of the room. He said, I want a massive island in the middle of this room, but he said, I want to sit here and look out the view. Now, obviously if you were sat with those uh, kind of mustardy type cushions bar uh, on that bench looking out, there's a lovely glazed window in front of you and it goes out to rolling acres of land near Romsey in Hampshire. Um, and his comments kind of really counteracted each other because how can you have a big island and also sit there? And we actually put two proposals to him of design eyes. And this is the one that he actually went for in the end. Um, and it was a really interesting project to do and, and fairly innovative. This sort of kind of built-in furniture hadn't been done that much um, as we see. And we're talking of you know 10 years ago now. Um, there's a little bit more of it going around now, but not necessarily quite done in this way. But I remember when we presented this to the judges of awards, they were a little bit confused by it because they'd never seen it before and they're asking all sorts of questions. Um, but a beautiful kitchen to, um, to do and really challenge the, the space. Um, when we were back for this photo shoot, um, about a year later, um, the, I asked the client um, what he thought about. He said, yeah, yeah, absolutely fine. Really, really love it. He said, but I just wish I'd involved you earlier. And I know exactly what he means because the way that the extension was designed, if we can see those red seats in the back there, that's the hallway coming from the front door. Now, because this was a listed building, the, uh, the planning authorities wouldn't allow him to convert the interior of his house into a big enough space uh, to put a kitchen. So he had to build a contemporary extension on the side of an arts and crafts, um, probably wouldn't call it a mansion, but it was a very significant house um, in, Romsey and he lined the hallway to this opening right out to a window which is on the left hand side um, and actually the the island basically pushes into that window space and um, by half a meter and what you would like to have done is built the extension where that back wall is half a meter further away and if we'd done that we'd have been able to line the whole thing up the hallway the island and the um, the window and this is why we always say to clients, bring us in at very early stages of the project, um, because once we're brought into a finished building or it's in process, it's very difficult to press back into the architecture and make sure the architecture is working properly. I'll talk a little about this one. I, I just want to um, highlight some things, as I know we've got so many case studies to show you, we won't have time to go into the depth of them all. If any capture your attention, then just uh, let us know because you can find them on our projects on uh, our projects on our website page if you haven't, and find a few more photographs and some information about it, or email us if you haven't got enough information. But one thing I want to say that's important about doing a design that's a wow is uh, look at the room here. We have a, a really large open plan room. It's open to the dining room. It's actually open to the lounge. It's opening because it's the centre part of the house. Um, and one of the significant things we do is work with the architecture of the building and uh, make it so that your kitchen is surrounded by a wrap of ceiling, walls, floor, which really embrace the kitchen and make it grounded. Uh, placing a beautiful kitchen in a very large space sounds like it's great you could get all mod cons in there, but actually you could end up racking. And I want to point out the ceiling, particularly in this case, the ceiling um, with its beautiful cornice that runs around the edge and its cover, which Keith is kind of highlighting now, which is recessed upwards so that light comes um, inside the perimeter. If you can now, perhaps in your mind's eye, imagine that none of that had been done to the ceiling and the ceiling was just a plain wall-to-wall -wall flat ceiling with spotlights in, at, in, in a grid line fashion. 
I don't know if you if it's happening to you what would happen to me if I saw that it's just it's a completely different interpretation in fact you're actually taking out most of the impact of the kitchen by just taking that ceiling away so when we're talking designing kitchens we aren't just talking designing cupboards and um, appliances, are we? We are really talking about the very fabric of the building. What is the flow and the space? What's the architecture doing? And how can we make sure that all of those things point to the right focus so that you have the right visual impact when you walk through the key doors uh, and you're left with a space that people want to want to gravitate towards, not dissipate from? So really important. No, that's excellent. I, and actually, I think it's a very good point is that one of the key things in here is that we did um, build the kitchen into the architecture and it's a very, makes it a very successful product. I successful in the sense is we were a finalist in the uh, Somatic um, Global Awards uh, for this range. We were finalists of three people in that from a global point of view. We didn't win, but um, I think we won by, by getting that far. Um, well, this, I'm going to talk about this a little bit because Helena's very shy on this one. This was um, up for Grand Design's House of the Year. You can see the kitchen down in that bottom left, so kitchen, the building in the bottom left-hand corner with the cantilever and the Porsche underneath. Well, the, the place that photo is, is, is taken is actually where that Porsche is, it's in that section above. So it's actually in the, the cantilever. Um, and um, it didn't win Grand Design's House of the Year, um, but Kevin McLeod was filmed in there for a few minutes and... Um, talked about the whole house and the kitchen. So we were delighted to um, be involved in that and, and have that um, um, happen. So, but it's Helen's kitchen that she designed. Well, I mean, I think when you look at this kitchen um, and you look at the picture of the architecture, the house that it's in, I hope you can see what I can see is that some of the, uh, the oblongs and the uh, kind of like juxtaposition of higher, lower and the stretching and you know, in two different directions is repeated in the kitchen itself. In other words, some of the very principles that were used in the build are actually principles that are used in the kitchen. Mm. That automatically makes this feel, kitchen feel like it should be part of the house. It's so important not to just kind of do something random that's totally disassociated to the architecture. Relevance, again, is one of our priorities. Mm. Um, and, Simplicity in this, because obviously the house on the outside is black, the kitchen on the inside is white. I mean, how simple but beautiful is that and the concept of that? Uh, and uh, so very minimalistic um, on this kitchen. And perhaps one of the lovely features in here is the mirrored splashback there, because mm. as you, you can't see from the picture uh, below the cantilever, but it looks out onto this gorgeous forested area. Um, so through those beautiful patio doors that you can, or, or open doors, you can see it on the right hand side of the kitchen photograph, it's just a magnificent vista. And that would be wasted if you were standing at the arga, which is at the back of the kitchen. Um, so unless, of course, you've done what we've done, which is put this wonderful glass flashback so that even the person working in the kitchen can both enjoy the view and maintain connectivity, another hot word of ours, with the people who are in the kitchen because they can talk to them even when their back is to them. So some simple, some simple award-winning, uh, heart-winning um, ideas <laughs> in that uh, kitchen, I think. Excellent, let's move on. Okay, this, this one here is such, again, a simple kitchen in principle in that it's a, a, a white kitchen. Everything in here is white. Um, but of course, there's these uh, amazing pink, bright pink accents. Um, and they're simply in the chair, uh, chairs, the pictures, the sofa, and the little bit of glass flashback that you see there. And um, one of the wonderful things about doing things like this is it doesn't take too much to change your kitchen around if you want to, because let's face it, maybe you've decided to go for hot pink but then you run out, I don't really want hot pink anymore. If you put hot pink kitchen units in, well, that would be quite a costly, um, you know, experience to re re redo your doors. But to change your chairs, to put a, a, a drape over your sofa, to switch out a picture, um, is even to change such a small area of splashback is a, a minimal cost. And therefore you can actually have a lot of fun with your kitchen 
this kitchen um, is loved by magazines and, and anything with a, an image because it's so striking. Um, but one of the things that won the client's heart, and well, actually, it was their testimony that really touched my heart. And, um, you know, it's lovely working for this family. They have uh, several children. Five of them wanted to get round a kitchen island and sit together. And um, most people, when they think of five, would put people in a long line. But we all know that that's not good for conversation and that we all engage better when we are um, kind of like uh, in a more circular or rounded form. And having some rounded areas in your kitchen do make for it. It breaks the edges off and it breaks tension as well. So these things are very impactful. So what I loved was a testimony that said that uh, when the, the man of the house um, arrives home, uh, to the kitchen he just can't wait to be down there with his family and they all kind of sit there and enjoy a conversation together that won their hearts that won my heart because honestly uh, um, family and kitchen whatever your family looks like whether it's just the two of you or whether it's kind of like extended family there's nothing like a good old chat and chin word around around a kitchen table is there so um, that's what made this design special for us and this um, kitchen, because I don't know what to say, this was on the front of a kitchen magazine, a very good article on the inside. And it's been our, interestingly, it's been our most um, naturally organic marketed kitchen. So it's been to Russia, it's been to Japan, China, I think. So um, it's amazing, really, how these things happen sometimes. Um, but this is a kitchen that we actually did for a couple that did the uh, wine. Um, they're both wine masters on BBC Saturday Kitchen Live. Um, and it was a really interesting um, kitchen. I wish in one sense we had more time to, uh, to look at different shots of this room um, because this is a real mix um, of kitchens in trying to fuse the kitchen together. If you go on our website and, ha and have a look at this, we'll be able to see more pictures, but we've basically taken three core material. Uh, well, the stainless steel, the white, and then the teak finished wood. And that is repeated um, in the whole of that room in different places. So there's a very synergistic um, connection between the whole, um, the whole of the space. And if you actually stand between the island and the back of the sink there in the, in the, um, in the kitchen, you're dealing with a very contemporary kitchen. All you can see of the wood is the, um, the kind of the dresser element at the back. But the reason why I've, I've, we've kind of put this one up and uh, maybe why we were up for an award for it is, is that um, it's kind of what we call a, a kitchen that is hiding. And what I mean by that is um, when a kitchen is, is in full use, it needs to be there and dramatic and powerful, everything where you need it, a uh, hub of the home, putting everybody together. And when it's not being used, it needs to sit back like a piece of art on the wall or uh, a sculpture in the corner. Um, in trying to make it feel that you're not living in this industrial area um, all, all the time. And that can be done in many different ways, and lighting is one of those ways, in colour schemes and textures. But it, if you can use your imagination and just look at the island and the back centre there piece, and just imagine, does that look like a dresser where you have the, the bottom part, the countertop, and then the dresser part at the side? So it kind of has the natural way of softening the kitchen down. If that was all done at that front edge, in a gray or a white, it would be a very, very different feel uh, for the whole space. So it was a very fun project to, um, uh, to be involved in. And, and actually now Peter and Susie, they do use that uh, kitchen for a lot of their video work um, when they're doing wine presentations. Can we move on? Well, this was an interesting kitchen because we've just um, completed this um, only a few months ago. It was one of the, a tricky kitchen to get together because it happened during the um, first lockdown and probably been in, it must be, it must be a year now, gosh, that's concrete, isn't it? Um, and this was really interesting here because this is um, an island, it's what we call a fusion kitchen. It's where you're taking two elements of a kitchen uh, together, a contemporary element and a classic element and putting them together in one kitchen. Um, so we're actually using somatic, this is actually all of, all of a somatic kitchen except for, for one thing which I'll, come back to it in a second um, and the beauty of this particular project was we had clients that were quite frustrated with some of where they wanted to go and when they discovered us through the architect um, it was a very enjoyable experience in working with them and really 
pushing the boundaries of um, what their space could do and how to create um, this really beautiful kitchen. And they've done the house up really, really well. It's all in this style and this color scheme running through the whole house. So we have on the center island there, somatic um, SLX with a, um, a special kind of, um, you can see like a, uh, it's like a smoked walnut um, door with a kind of a black finish into the gray. Um, and that can light on that recess profile, but uh, they didn't want that, so it's not on that. And then on the back here, we actually did a customized door because they wanted a particular um, door finish and we used buster and punch handles um, throughout the whole of the side. So we had custom, custom door handles and, and custom door on that. And then we put a custom extractor on the top and they wanted it covered um, or finished in a zinc finish. Now we looked at many different options um, of spraying it um, and trying to have it made in zinc, but actually it, it just couldn't be done. So that's actually overclad um, in a zinc finish. Now, one of the really beautiful things about here is you can just see the edge. We have a, a very high section of that um, above the, uh, the island there, that kind of recess. You can see the glass units um, just going up the back. Very similar to the one that we did in the stately home. But these are probably twice the size of the ones that you saw in the stately home. So it really plays on that whole height and length. And when they're lit all the way through the top, it just gives a beautiful wash of light over the top, which is really, really soft. But it also helps deal with height in rooms because height in rooms is really difficult to deal with when you have there probably a four meter high uh, ceiling on the side. And I'm just gonna show you a different picture just from the other side. This is just showing you the dining area with the dresser um, that was put onto the side yeah, over, you can see the beautiful, you can see the, the doors on the right hand side and the really lovely roof light on the top, which has rolled down blinds because it gets very, very hot uh, with all that glass. Um, this again is now creating this fusion connection between the two. We had a, we did a custom made table there um, where it was designed um, and um, uh, manufactured purposely for them. And uh, you can't really see the legwork under there, but it, um, it's a really stunning uh, finish. So we haven't entered this design award yet, but we hope to um, next year. Let's talk about this project or do you want me to? Uh, okay. Um, we talked about earlier that we're primarily a contemporary studio, um, but this is obviously not a contemporary kitchen, um, although it has the use of uh, more, let's do word, modern materials um, and finishes in its styling. Um, this is actually going into a magazine um, in January. Um, it will be out on the 1st or 2nd of January. I think it's, um, I think it's Homes and Country and Garden or something. Joy's, joy's on this, so I'm bound to get told country off. But, uh, interiors, country Homes and Interiors, is it? Joy, if that's um, not right, yeah. can you just um, in the chat box. put that in the chat box and say what the, um, the, the title mm -hmm. is? So um, we've just seen the proof today of the, of the text that's going through. We're looking forward to that going into the magazine because then you'll see it in its full glory. We can't put this on our website yet because obviously it has to go in the magazine first. Um, this was a really beautiful kitchen um, with a client that came to us that was um, slightly frustrated, not really, his architect had designed a, a very nice extension for him and put in a kind of a mock-up for the kitchen, but it wasn't quite working for them. Um, and actually, when we actually started working with the client, um, we actually adjusted the architecture. So we centered the range cooker on that back wall there. Now, when the um, building was originally designed and got planning permission, well, there was three windows on that back wall and the client allowed us to make the bold step of removing a window in order to center that back wall on the Arga and then to frame um, the whole um, thing around. So it's a very um, lovely, clever um, space. But there's a couple of things I just want to draw you off to center which you wouldn't see if I pointed it out. And um, the first thing is that and if you can see on the right hand side, I don't know if you can see my mouse or not, here it is here. The right hand side over here, you can see little brown and white and red module things over here. Well, this is an espresso machine um, under here with an espresso capsules actually slotted on that corner unit when it curves around that back. Um, it looks absolutely beautiful because you just have them already on the outside, so you know exactly what you want. And interestingly, something that's actually quite functional and practical is very visible and actually becomes an integral part of the design, which is really lovely. That same curve is then reflected on the left-hand side. So you see that on that, um, that unit on the wall there. So it kind of um, you know, goes together quite well. And the other thing that you can't quite see is on this peninsula, um, the bottom here on the left-hand side, if you can see that, you can just see some 
dark lines in. Well, there's a little pop-up television in here that when you motorize it up, it comes up to a 32 inch size TV that's on a 180 degree swivel, which means on the dining room area, which is, which is behind me, where the photo has been taken from, you can, um, you can watch the TV here, you can watch it from the breakfast bar, and you can watch it from over here when you're, um, when you're cooking. I'll carry on on this one, because this is um, one of my notes. This was a very interesting project. Again, we work a lot with architects, but what's really interesting with, not all architects, but some architects don't really design the interior of a space in perhaps the same way an interior designer might do, or an interior architect, uh, architect might, um, might do in the process here. And this was one of these um, projects that we um, walked into and we were asked to quote for. And um, when I'd um, done the quote and done the design, the client said, yep, well, we're, we're happy with the price and, and that's all fine. And because we kind of just copied uh, an architect's design, he said to me, is there, is there, if you were doing this from scratch, is there anything that you would change? Well, that's a really interesting question. And I said dangerous to him, question. it's a very dangerous question, yeah, to ask me sometimes. And um, he, I said, well, I said, that, I said, there is, I think, a much better design here. And if you, um, yeah, there is a much better design here. And if you want me to say, I can tell you, but I know it's going to cost you more money. And he said, okay, that's fine. He said, why is it going to cost you? One, because it's going to be a bigger kitchen. And two, they'd already put a window in and they'd already built a utility room and I wanted to remove it. So um, I explained my idea to him. He said, okay, that's really interesting. And this was what we actually installed and what he went with. Now, where these glass units are is actually was, we created this bar area and the freezer for the, for the kitchen is down on this side here. So we have glass storage, um, bottles, wine, a little uh, Kalo single bottle, um, with the glass unit. So this is where the window was going to be into the house and this is where the utility room was. And the utility room was running from roughly about here out to where that table is and then back right into the bottom left hand corner, taking a huge chunk out of it, which meant that when you came in the kitchen, you were immediately um, from the hallway into the kitchen dining space, you were immediately stumbling over the table directly in front of you and having to um, negotiate your way around this table very quickly and what I would say was too quickly. So by taking that out and effectively moving the dining room table across, creating this extra storage, um, creating the wider made it much more interesting and I think a much more beautiful uh, space. Um, one of the things that's really important with this quite simple kitchen here, uh, which is on a, in a beach house, is again making sure that um, the inside and the outside have a chemistry. If your view is of the beach outside and the driftwood coming up, why not create a, a kitchen which has that lovely driftwood look, that kind of natural look. And this is actually um, a laminate kitchen rather than a real wood kitchen, which of course is much more practical in um, sea salt environment um, and also reduces the cost massively. But the laminates are so amazing these days, you can do so much with them. There's so, many, so much texture built into the laminates. I think you can see here just the simplicity of using tone on tone. Um, so not only the units, but the worktops, the panels at the sides, over and under and around the window, all in the same wood. Um, makes it really easy when you have to choose, you know, what finishes do I use? You don't have to kind of think, oh, <laughs> yeah. with, what am I mixing and matching? Because the simplicity of the beach is the beach that you really want to see, the view of outside. Everything else has to become the backdrop. So sometimes your kitchen has to be quiet to let everything else have a voice. Mm. And it's really important to know, is it the view that's the most important thing to you? Is it the gathering place? Is it, um, you know, is it the argot? What is it that's gonna be the focus of what you're looking at? And then the tension that you use in terms of uh, the finishes and the fabric and the layout must all play a part in um, making sure that, that that brief is upheld because otherwise the outcome will be sad outcome. Um, and again, like I said, it's all about the feeling when you get in this place. I think you, if you were in here, you'd feel like you were at the beach and playing your part in the environment. 
I think this particular kitchen has been in many magazines. I think it's in the Times, Telegraph, Build It magazine, Home Building Renovation magazine, um, and lots of I call um, in work with the architect. We work with and this is an excellent architect and and does some um, superb work. All right, let's get to the next picture. This is yours. So. Um... This is, we haven't particularly shown you a picture of the kitchen in here, just that um, in the kitchen are different areas of focus. And um, like we said before, it's really important uh, that all the people who are going to be using the kitchen have a place to be and a purpose. There are many kitchens that we've walked into where there isn't anywhere for anyone to either relax, it's either perch at the bar or go away uh, or do the work of the kitchen um, or it may be that you know you actually just want to have a kind of a sit down and read a book for a while so and I love the thought of having pause places we're all ridiculously busy in our lives these days and so making sure that our kitchens are not only places of incredibly you know intense activity when we're you know cooking but also, we have a chance to pause. So in this area, I mean, the kitchen was set up completely different originally when uh, before we, we uh, had a chance to look at this. And it was all set at the very back, as far back as you can see. Then the dining table was in the middle and then there was kind of a, a lounge uh, this side. It, and it just was trying to cram everything into one space. What's happened here is we've got a, a wood burning fire, which always creates winter focus, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, you can just see a little glimpse of a, a real wood wall, you know, where you've got some lovely texture and depth going on in a wood wall, which actually extends into a kind of like a little orangery uh, with, a, a, you know, a lot of light coming in. And then just some really beautiful individual casual chairs, uh, you know, one for each key person of the house. And then there's a few other bumpties and things for, um, for visitors. It's just a nice little pause place. It's not their main lounge it's, and, and it's not their dining because they are off the other rooms, but it's a, it's a great place. Your kitchen doesn't have to take up the whole room. It needs to have enough storage for you, but it needs to have welcome and pause places. So also really important to know who and what will be happening in the kitchen when we're designing it. Excellent. And uh, the Myers Touch, she did the uh, interior design and uh, furniture selection for this kitchen. Uh, this was a, a really interesting project that we um, did in uh, near Hook in Hampshire. Um, and it was a couple who were retiring from London down to a very beautiful um, country home um, outside, but wanted a very contemporary filter. And we were literally given this space. Um, and the only brief we had was where they wanted the Argo. Um, and we needed to work out a way of putting it together. So the Arga position was fine. As we went through the equipment specification, they wanted very, very large fridge, wine, and uh, freezer, which you can just see uh, under the Myers Touch logo here, the wine cooler, uh, the fridge on the right-hand side and the freezer on the left-hand side. But this is actually a very significant bank um, of appliances to deal with. Um, and as they've taken up one of the main walls for the Argo, where they wanted that to be, and that was partly because we had to get the flue of the Argo through the chimney stack, and that's why it had to be in that position. Um, it actually became quite an interesting kitchen to design because we're trying to deal with this flexible dining space. As you can see, it's uh, something we recommend quite a few times is you, you have a table that can leaf out to give you the ability to, to cater for 10 or to 12 uh, for a meal if you wanted to but not have that as your primary uh, everyday kitchen because it becomes too dominant in the room and it overtakes the space too much. So it's nice to shrink down to a little six seater like this or even sometimes a four seater if it's a bit tighter uh, for space. And um, it, it creates that lovely um, uh, kind of uh, ability to walk around and entertain quite successfully. There's, because this is a more classic building on the outside, um, they don't have, uh, these sliding door type bifold things on the side. They have lovely kind of um, classic windows um, running all the way around on, on two sides, which is where all that light is flooding in from. So when they actually are working at the back here, on the, uh, the back of the island, the ability for the client to be able to move in their own private space, access the sink 
in that kind of center part with all the appliances there and then utility room boot room uh, at the back through that door uh, worked really, really well. Um, this was another interesting um, project where we were approached to by a client who was struggling with her space and it's just not working very well. And what we ended up doing here, we can't see this picture, is we, we knocked a wall down, um, which is basically between the lounge, sorry, between the kitchen and the dining room, integrated this whole space into one space, put roof lights into the roof. Um, obviously that whole door system there opened up. And we did something we're not really kind of, that's one of the first times we did this, is we created this very strong feature back wall. Um, if you can just see, obviously, here, you've got storage, pantry storage here, the oven storage. And then if you can just see, you've got lights coming through. And if you look at the bottom of the unit, so you'll see that there's lights underneath. That's because that's a hidden pocket door system that goes through into the utility room. Um, and also is a bit of their boot room where they come in um, and put their coats and shoes. So it's actually quite nice to be able to hide that um, in that in the day-to-day -day aspects of the kitchen. And... Um, then have it just open if you need to get access there because um, you want to be in and out of that room sometimes when you're actually using it. So it worked really, really well. Had this very lovely single big island. You can just see one chair on the back there. There's some more chairs that run around um, the side and work really, really well as a, as a space. Um, like I said, working with architects is quite common for us. Um, and this is a client that we were working at on a project um, up near Alton. And the, the client, um, the island there, you can see it's like this aircraft wing was um, a bespoke thing that the client had, had made for uh, a project many, many years ago and cost him quite a significant amount of money. So when he moved house, he bought it with him. And it's definitely a very unique sculptured um, architectural piece where the hob and the breakfast um, bar sit. Not for everybody. So we had to integrate into that. Now the brief for this project, um, was there's really uh, three materials, concrete, oak, and stainless steel. And everything in the project is concrete, oak, and stain, stainless steel. Um, this, yeah. and, and glass, and, glass well, <laughs> and brick, I saw a bit of brick in there, but I mean, yeah, the core, the core material, can't see, can't see the glass. <laughs> um, but this um, whole back island, which is all Wolf and Sub-Zero, um, so they're very large uh, format appliances. Uh, 760 wide appliances and um, refrigeration had to be floating off the wall. Um, now, you can't hang that weight on the wall. So we had to customize a stainless steel plinth for the whole um, kitchen to sit onto and to be bolted into, to hold it into place. And then we put extra bolting uh, to hold it onto the wall. So it's actually the plinth, so the technical, it's set back 300, millimeters from the front which is about a foot for the old the older ones amongst us um, whereas normally a plinth is set back about 70 millimeters from the front so it creates this floating feel which is that real light touch we had customized uh, doors put on the front there to match the same um, oak that was on the ceiling and, and through the rest of the house and then we did this thing which we've never done before which is we wanted to make the view from the window very seamless so if you can look at the patio doors um, onto the outside here, see the connectivity to the outdoors is really, really important. And if you want to know more about that, I cover it quite a bit in the, the talk called Creating Kitchens with Light, Space and Laughter, which is on our YouTube channel, which talks about the connectivity between indoors and outdoors. But using these very slim um, window details here, it maximizes the glass. We wanted to repeat that over here. So what we've got is we've got the, the stainless steel um, worktop and panels basically it's all the six millimeter stainless steel running around the whole panel goes to the outside edge and goes right up to the glass so it's seamless as you see no window frame at all from the inside um, of the house it's two millimeters one to two millimeters um, around that frame it gives a very beautiful uh, thing my fitter when I my operations manager when I said to him about what we were doing had a bit of a hissy fit but got quite oh no and they, they did a fantastic job they got it all in then he said to me never never do that again because that's really hard and we of course we have we've done it quite a few times now because we know what we're doing now um and it's great that we've got a team of fitters which i must honor because you know we put together some of these complex projects for people and i tell you if we can't fit them then it creates, a, creates, creates a problem so yeah it's a great team to be able to enjoy that
I think we can talk about this one. Yeah, I mean, uh, such a stunning kitchen. Um, it was a, a beautiful, large room and you can't see the full extent because the length goes on quite a way to the left hand side of this photograph. But we picked this photograph specifically to um, show you, you know, we do find the dining table, or, or it's not the main dining table, obviously this is like a breakfast table, is so important. Conversation is, is vital, it's part of our life, our living, and incorporating these places where we can, in larger kitchens, obviously we've got to be very clever and crafty in smaller kitchens, and we do have a design talk, um, which is entitled um, how to design with small or larger kitchens in mind. So. Spaces, yeah, spaces spaces. yeah, so uh, obviously not everybody has a, a really large space like this, but um, creating this uh, bespoke banquet seating was, was great in here. And of course, look at the texture on the wall, that beautiful uh, textured wall, which was actually, we worked in conjunction with an interior designer. Sometimes we interior design on our own projects, um, as we did with, a, with some of the walls on previous cases. Sometimes we work with clients who already have... Um, interior designers and other professionals involved and we just kind of like slot in um, so we can work in many different ways with different clients according to your needs and who you have involved but uh, the end result is you know you get a peek over the back into what is the study area but of course if you've got a child doing homework or you're you have to be working from home and you know we do that a lot these days don't we imagine if you've been in lockdown been in this kitchen wow and um, i think you've got everything set you've got a place to have breakfast you've got this amazing large place you've got the kind of calmness of that wall which is just kind of saying it's inviting you as though you're outside but you're inside so even if you're stuck in you feel like you're kind of walking through a forest with that wood plus you, you know you've got you're studying or homeworking right there in the middle so you're you're out of the way, um, but not um, hidden away. And there's a there's a huge dog. If you get to go on our website, this there's a lovely giant Great Dane that lives in this kitchen too. And his bed is just behind there as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, he's rather scary. He comes running up to you and barks. He's and so big. He's, he's very big. big. He's very big. Um, so this um, this kitchen here, it's it's got the architect's um, prints on it at the moment. Uh, uh, Air Chamberlain Gaunt um, is the architect that we worked with on this particular kitchen. The reason why this is um, on here at the moment is it's an embargoed picture um, that we can't uh, publicise as, as yet of the kitchen that we did. Um, you can see that the, um, the, 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 the right hand side, the black lines, that kind of runs around uh, the whole of a part of the building and runs through the kitchen. So we've continued the kitchen and we've had to fix those uh, bars onto the kitchen um, and then just see the other side you can see all the appliances um, the island peninsula and um, the refrigeration in the back center there uh, when you look at this kitchen um, it's a beautiful kitchen and I think it's up I think it's up for grand designs house of the year or that's what it's been submitted for and it will definitely win something because the the architecture of the building as a whole is absolutely stunning um, and it's, it's a delight to be involved in projects like this but what you don't realize when you look at this kitchen from this angle, this kitchen was designed for a wheelchair um, uh, person um, who um, uh, we had to design it around accessibility. So they'd had a conceptual design uh, done by a, a specialist in that, in that field of a, of a concept of what to do. Um, but they wanted a high quality product and what was really interesting for me is when I spoke to her, she's a, a wonderful lady um, who is so positive and full of life, but obviously limited in her accessibility. And there's certain things that one needs to do when you're dealing with certain accessibility issues. Um, and in my conversation with her, I said, to, I said, do you want me to design, you know, detail a disability type kitchen for you? Or can we try to make this kitchen as normal as possible for you? So it's not really called a disability kitchen anymore. And I think that's one of the things that some disability type aids are really so functional and boring and ugly and they work practically, but they don't work aesthetically. And that's why design is, I think is really, really important to have that tension and that balance between the two, looking beautiful, but also being um, incredibly functional at the same time. 
And this is probably an epitome of something that has to have a phenomenal degree of functionality, but yet um, be really useful at the same time. So hopefully you might see this come out in um, brand designs. Uh, again, um, just a, a, a snapshot of part of the kitchen at an unusual angle, this photograph, um, because we just wanted to highlight one thing, which was the island. Islands are playing a huge feature in today's kitchens. And not every room will suit an island. So sometimes there's peninsulas. And again, we talk about those kind of things in other design talks. But for this one, we have an island. And um, the island is a place which not only provides protection for the cook, the chef, but also a welcome and a hospitable place for those to join from the other side. And we just wanted to show you, you know, you don't just have to fill the island with cabinets. Um, in this particular case, obviously we cantilevered uh, wooden surround from the top, the sides and the, and the bottom edge um, on this island. And then we had um, glass panels, which have got a beautiful design inlaid. You can't quite see the design because of the, the lighting here inside, but like a Chinese wallpaper pattern effect behind. Um, and basically, whichever, whatever kind of um, features and textures are the things that you get excited about. These kind of things can be brought directly into your kitchen um, and just create a hospitality, really, and a talking place. And that's what we wanted to show you on, on uh, this kitchen. I'm just conscious of times we're running over a little bit at the moment, but um, yes, we're, yes, we're, almost, um, we're almost there. And I'll, so um, this is a, another project we worked with uh, for an architect. Um, we had the doors custom design for this. This is very rich tonally and again, very simple. Uh, the colour scheme and the way that the artifacts are pulled together in what is actually quite a simple kitchen in a very, it was actually built interestingly as an as a Airbnb uh, for the clients um, to be in their back garden of, as you can see, a fairly significant house. Um, and then they were going to move into it um, when they had the main house renovated. Loved this so much, they ended up staying there and not renovating um, the house. Uh, so it's nice that um, you can design these lovely spaces um, for people that end up so, so, so nice. I won't speak too much more about this with the purpose of just wanting to... Um, uh, we just wet your appetite. Yes, <laughs> good idea, good plan. Uh, we just wanted to, this one, there's two pictures as associated with this particular kitchen for this am amazing client um, in Hastings Way. And uh, so we just wanted to show you. So from this particular angle, um, it's a very calm, um, a very calm kitchen. Uh, two tonal, as you can see, beautiful surround. It's lovely sometimes to use um, uh, surrounds above and and to either side to frame the kitchen, it really adds substance, especially when you have kind of like a side, so you don't need a side of the unit, you actually have it as a, almost like it's as though it's a wall in itself. Uh, and then look at that lovely um, piece of uh, architecture that Keith has created in this kitchen that runs up where the picture on the wall is and then across the top of the island. So again, if you were to go back through some of the photographs and look and say, hey, look what they've done on the, the ceiling of this one and this one and this one, we, we hope that you'll see that they all uh, help to embrace the kitchen. And this is the L shape here with the L shape uh, breakfast bar on the island. Uh, they're kind of like um, different angles on different planes, but um, helping to bring synergy into this kitchen. But one of the perhaps surprises in this kitchen, if we show you on the next picture, is that Behind, oh. behind that um, picture on the wall, is a, it's actually been pulled out from the wall to create a niche both sides of the framework because the client wanted to have a place for easy access of her cookbooks. And we all know cookbooks, we love them, but they get dog-eared and we don't want to throw them away because we know exactly where the recipes are that we want to find um, or, or you know some other artifacts that we don't necessarily want them to be on show but we don't want uh, to open our cupboard and have dirty fingers on our cupboards to get to them. So we've got to keep finding clever um, uh, and spontaneous ways to um, create both mystery, surprise, um, and uh, functionality in the kitchens that we design. So we thought that that would show you a little bit of a surprise. 
And um, if you're interested to look at this bit, but it is on our website, but also on our YouTube channel, there's a probably a 20 minute um, video testimonial um, where we interviewed the clients um, about this kitchen um, mm -hmm. and their whole journey. I actually met these, this client when I was doing a lecture at Grand Designs in London um, and took them on a journey, uh, which they were absolutely, they were stretched. Um, although when you look at the kitchen, it looks very simple, but they were very, very stretched into um, the ideas. And we actually went down there and, and they were, they, you know, they became friends really in a sense. And we have an open invite to their home every time we're down that area. Uh, this was um, a project that we, um, we, we did when we were approached by the client. He, he has, a, has a home that overlooks the Spinnaker Tower in Portsmouth Harbour. Um, and it's the penthouse apartment. So out that window is a beautiful uh, view of the Spinnaker Tower, the whole of Gumball Keys and the Harbour and the Royal Navy uh, docks behind. So it's a really um, beautiful uh, place for them. And this was the first kitchen. We've done a second kitchen for them now on the Isle of Wight because they've just done a new build home on the Isle of Wight. Um, and when he came to us, he said, I want a boat in my kitchen. And, and we kind of looked at each other and went, a boat in the kitchen. Okay, right. <laughs> so um, we actually um, designed this boat-shaped um, kitchen uh, to create um, uh, a very, very, I think, uh, we've got a second picture. I know we haven't. I was wondering if we had a second picture there. Um, it's, it's on our website. It's worth looking at because if you go from the front of it, you, you, can, you can see the way it's done. This really um, stretched us. I mean, it was a few years ago we did this now. Um, but trying to get the shape, the style, uh, the work, trying to link in a little bit, we're using this kind of spinnaker shaped breakfast bar on there to kind of get these nautical themes uh, that run through. Even the flooring, which is Antico, has a black line um, spacing each piece of wood uh, to make it look like a, a grip tech on a, on, on a yacht. So um, a little splash back at the back there, um, client loved turtles, uh, particularly the wife. So there's this whole piece on on the turtles at the back there um, to uh, kind of link to that sort of thing. So very, very pers personalized. And as you can see, this was up for um, designer, kitchen designer of the year um, with the KBSA again. But can you go into the I'm not going, I'm not going to really do this side, um, but this, um, this here encapsulates the philosophy that the Myers Touch has and the way that we work. And if you want to think about how we um, approach projects and how we end up with spaces that are award-winning for our clients, not really worried about awards at a, at a national level. It's about winning the hearts and minds uh, and a space for a client. This is our process and philosophy. We really went out of time to go into this too much more detail, but it's the four stages um, that we go through of design, which you will be able to view on our Light Space and Laughter Talk on our YouTube channel if you would like to do that or keep an eye out for our next talks that are coming up. So just to summarise really, I think what does make an award-winning kitchen, well you've seen some glimpses into quite a few there, um, but really I think having the right expertise is critical because you can't just walk into this blind, you, even if you can get some DIY help, you really do need people who, who, are, who are used to the challenges of large and small spaces. Um, I think the second critical thing is form and function, it's got to look beautiful, but it's got to work beautifully too. So it can't be award-winning if it only achieves one of those things. And um, the next thing is it's got to be relevant. It has to be original to the place that it's original. We've connected it to either yourselves, your past, or the outside or something significant. The relevance is really important. Uh, the, third, the fourth is personalization. You might have chosen um, some favourites and run the way and some that you really don't like. A kitchen could be Marmite. You could love it or hate it, depending on, you know, if it's your one or not. It, personalisation really is important. And finally, it's got to make you go, oh, wow. When you're in the kitchen, you need to, uh, those feelings that you wanted to have right at the beginning that you dreamt of must emerge. Otherwise, it hasn't been a success. If you wanted a peaceful place, it must be peaceful. If you wanted a vibrant place, it must be vibrant. We can't mix the, we can't get that wrong. So these are the, these are the five factors that make for your kitchen to be the
So we hope that um, this has been useful for you. Please continue with any questions by emailing us um, at info or design at the myerstouch.co.uk. Looking on the website, www.themyerstouch.co.uk. Um, speaking to uh, one of our designers, one of our design team who will be more than happy to talk to you about your particular project. Of course, look on YouTube and visit the Miles Touch on there, catch up with some of our previous design talks. Definitely uh, log on to some more because we will be doing another one in November and the date of that can be found on our website shortly. Um, so for this evening, we hope that you've uh, had a lot of information look forward to seeing you again very soon.